I will get to why our school is called the Gunnery in a second. Um, but first, just a little bit of context. Um, independent schools, as defined really by their membership in the National Association of Independent Schools, uh, comprise um, that membership comprises about 1,800 schools, uh, which is less than 1% of all the schools nationally, and a much smaller fraction of the, the U total U.S. student population. Uh, boarding schools, which is the, the part of that, that sector that the gunnery is part of, uh, are represent about 300 of the 1,800 schools. So it's a very small slice um, of the U.S. school pie. Um, it, it is a, a, a sort of out, uh, a slice that, that has an outsized influence uh, on our national imagination. Uh, that's a conversation for another time. Uh, our particular school uh, was founded in 1850. We are co-ed. We have 300 students uh, in grades 9 through 12. Uh, we are 70% boarding, 30% day. We are 80% uh, students from the U.S., 20% from outside the United States, 22 states, 21 countries represented. Uh, we're located here uh, on 200 acres in the northwest corner of Connecticut. Uh, we have 60 faculty and advisors, almost all of whom are uh, a combination of teachers, uh, coaches, or uh, in the arts with the kids, uh, and have some responsibility in, in residential life. And as I said, we were founded uh, by, uh, in 1850 by this guy, Frederick Gunn, and that's what, where our name comes from. His, his uh, first alumni actually uh, named the school after him. Um, and this guy, Frederick Gunn, was uh, really an outsized figure uh, in antebellum uh, New England. Uh, he was an educator, obviously. He was also an ardent abolitionist. Harriet Beecher Stowe sent two of her sons to the school, largely um, because of Mr. Gunn's uh, beliefs and actions and his relationship to the Stowe family, uh, the Beecher family. Um, and as Al mentioned yesterday, he's also credited as being the founder of the American camping movement. Um, this year is his 200th birthday, so we're doing a lot to celebrate him. As with most independent schools, uh, we are a mission-driven school. And this is the mission statement. Actually, this is an excerpt of the mission statement. Uh, the full mission statement is in, in your packet. Um, but it, it reads as follows. It was updated in 2001, uh, well before I got there. This is my fifth year. It says, in 1850, Frederick Gunn established a school based on the belief that strength of character was the goal of education. Today, the gunnery rests on the four cornerstones of character. And that phrase, the four cornerstones, is, is key to, to our story. Um, scholarship, integrity, respect, and responsibility. Uh, character is forged in a cohesive, diverse community informed by a challenging college preparatory curriculum, a broad range of athletic, artistic, and social activities, and a faculty of scholars and committed educators dedicated to the intellectual and ethical development of every student. A gunnery graduate is a broadly educated, socially responsible citizen with tested beliefs, strength of character, and the courage to act on convictions. Um, now this mission is really at the heart of the problem that I'd say I encountered uh, five years ago. Uh, I had read The Death of Character. I was an undergraduate student here, uh, took a couple of classes from James, other people here at the, the Institute, Josh Yates, uh, had really formed my thinking on a lot of this. And so I wasn't entirely surprised to find that even at a school that has strength of character as the first plank of its mission, if you asked all 60 faculty to define character, you would get 60 different definitions and very little sort of coherence, plenty of overlap, but not real coherence about why they defined it as they did. Did character mean obedience to school rules? Did it mean, as one colleague uh, puts it, the willingness to stand up to Hitler. In other words, the, the willingness to break certain rules uh, or norms when morally compelled. Did it mean consistency between ideas and actions uh, or something else? So we had this problem of, of definition and coherence. Moreover, very few, if any, teachers uh, had an explicit working theory about method, uh, method of developing character in high school students. 
to the extent that any theory held sway, it seemed to rest on accountability, that correcting students when they broke the rules would push them back in the direction of character. So it was very much sort of what we were against, uh, not what we were for, what not to do, not uh, necessarily what to do. To be fair, when students broke big rules, big rules for us uh, are drinking on campus uh, or plagiarism, things like that, or repeatedly smoke, broke small rules like attendance and things like that, they entered into a very intentional probationary discipline process, not quite sort of restorative justice uh, in its intentionality, but it required journaling and self-reflection and definitely some ideas about um, how a student grows. But this sort of lack of a working theory was particularly problematic for, for us and for me uh, as, as a boarding school educator because we as a 24 hour, seven day a week uh, total institution arguably have more opportunity than most institutions to shape the character of our students. At about the same time as I began to think about uh, character development in our particular school community, uh, there were two efforts that were emerging uh, to really to redefine character, uh, how it develops and how to measure it that began to dominate within independent schools. Uh, one is called the Mission Skills Assessment and the other is Character Lab, and I'll get to them in a second, but it's important to point out that they both derive in, in very particular ways from the work of Martin Seligman and the positive psychology movement. Um, Seligman's book uh, from, from 2004, uh, Character, Strengths, and Virtues, which he co-wrote with Christopher Peterson, is really the foundational text here, but Paul Tuff's book that probably all of you are familiar with, How Children Succeed, really summarizes Seligman's work, and it traces the story of the folks who were to go on to create the Character Lab. The key move that these two adaptations, the, the Mission Skills Assessment and Character Lab, make uh, with Seligman's work is to focus on character as principally the means to an end of uh, meritocratic success rather than uh, really a moral good in and of itself. And you can see that echoed in this excerpt uh, from Tuff where he's describing Seligman and Peterson's work. That these character strengths do not, the, the value of them comes not from their relationship to any particular system of ethics, but from their practical benefit. Uh, that they are a reliable path to uh, the good life. So first briefly on uh, the mission skills assessment, and you have these cards in your packets as well. Um, the mission skills assessment was developed by a group of um, independent school middle schools uh, and the Center for Academic and Workforce Readiness and Success, which is a research arm of ETS and focuses on middle schools, uh, defines character in these ways, teamwork, creativity, ethic, ethics, resilience, curiosity, and time management. Uh, similarly, Character Lab is created by Angela Duckworth, um, the, the thinker behind GRIT, uh, Dave Levin, the co-founder of the KIPP schools, and Dominic Randolph, um, the head of Riverdale Country School, uh, and a friend and a former colleague of mine from the Lawrenceville School. Uh, and, and they even more explicitly uh, redefine character uh, according to these eight traits. So these efforts have come in a relatively brief time within this independent school world to dominate most discussions of character and specifically to reframe the terms of those discussions and suggest that character is essentially project management skills with sort of a dash of ethics rather than moral discipline, attachment, or autonomy on behalf of the common good. And I would say the reasons for their ascendancy are worth closer examination uh, if time permits. The language is non-divisive and it's couched in science. It suggests quantifiability uh, and they suggest sort of an end or a goal for character, this meritocratic achievement that schools that charge tuition, as we all do, are under a lot of pressure to deliver to our, our families. So this, in short, is the problem of character uh, that I encountered. Despite a character-focused mission in history, the adults expected to help students to deliver character had little background training or agreement on, on what it is uh, and how it develops, and the terms of the discussion were shifting at the very same moment. 
And I should say in 2012 when I arrived, school's in good shape in many ways, but there were more pressing and concrete sort of challenges and opportunities facing us. Uh, I never explicitly asked anyone to work on this. Um, it bothered me a lot, but um, what I did, and, and this wasn't great leadership by any stretch, but I just kept pointing out the problem, kept pointing out um, the, the inconsistency. I literally, and I debated whether or not to include this because I don't mean this just by flattery, but I read aloud from the Road to Character when it came out and introduced the distinction between the eulogy and resume virtues because those terms and the stories used to illustrate them really reflected accurately the concern about the trend in independent schools to define character essentially as resume virtues and the pressure on us to do just that. They were very helpful and concrete uh, uh, terms for us. So I was really pleasantly surprised uh, when this colleague two years ago named Jared Sisk, who's a well-respected math and economics teacher at our school, sort of took up the challenge and said, if this is such a problem, should we do something about it? Um, and I, I have to say, everything I'll say from here on out is, is me representing Jared's work. Um, and I, I want to give him full credit. Um, and really began a conversation about character at our school, at least, at least really focused among adults. So he worked with a small group of colleagues to define character for us. OK, so what does it mean within our particular moral and linguistic universe? Um, through soliciting input from faculty um, and students, through large and small group meetings and discussions, online surveys, things like that. And then actually uh, with the intention at first of making an attempt at tracking student progress in it. And the, his process was, was great uh, in a lot of ways. Highly collaborative, it was sort of bottom up. It was not imposed by me um, or another member of the administration. Um, it really used language that made sense for us locally, um, differentiated for us character in sort of a more classical sense from uh, what we as a school have for many years called academic merit, um, the scholarship piece of the four cornerstones of character. Um, and uh, it included, it concluded rather that at present actually based on feedback from faculty that we should resist the temptation to try to quantify uh, student progress in it. Um, and then for a variety of reasons, um, it's important to point out in, in the context of sort of fellow practitioners that this process has stalled. Um, and we can get into that uh, if there's an opportunity. But the result of Jared's work is what he called the, the cornerstones of character proposal, which doesn't fit on one slide, um, but you can find it in, in your packets. I won't go through uh, each item, but this idea of the cornerstones of character um, picks up on the, the other three uh, cornerstones of character. So, so we had scholarship sort of taken care of uh, with what we call an academic merit system that is actually very, very similar to the mission skills assessment and the character lab um, uh, frameworks. Um, this instead spells out what we mean by the, the, the moral components of character. So uh, in this case, what do we mean by integrity? A lot of work went into sort of fleshing out uh, the self-restraint, bravery, honesty, um, then respect, uh, gratitude, kindness, respect, and collaboration, um, and then responsibility. Working together, service to the community, service to the world. And then the proposal also goes uh, into laying out uh, different moments uh, and times in our school life. Some of these really only make sense in, in the context of our school, uh, when we might practice these components of character uh, or draw attention to them. Uh, some of them are unique, some of them are pretty standard in terms of speakers and themes and things like that. So by way of, I put it toward success, there's, I'm not British, but that uh, we're very much, very much a work in progress uh, on this. Um, in fact, just getting the invitation to be here sort of motivated me to sort of restart the process, ask them to keep moving with it. But 
The process and the resulting proposal has really been for us an important first step towards solving at least one of the immediate problems, defining our terms in ways that are particular and make sense locally. It also prescribes or begins to, to pres prescribe a method, moments and rituals when these ideas would take shape in the lives of students. It is evidence of provisional sort of success that the school has created a common language uh, for morally infused character in our community. And from the perspective of leading change, um, it is a success that a highly respected faculty member uh, and some mid-level administrators have led this effort up to this point rather than being sort of um, my project or, or top down. Um, but it is a work in progress. And from here, it's important to keep these definitions alive such that as students and faculty sort of enter the community uh, or consider doing so, that they understand what character means uh, here or for, for us at the gunnery compared to other institutions. We have an obligation as a community to sort of test and compare our definition against those of similar communities. And I'd hope eventually um, test those against sort of philosophical and theological traditions. We've done none of that yet. Uh, and was in preparing for this that Graham actually uh, sort of pointed out to me um, that our process is what, uh, what he put as a discovered truth approach to the problem and opportunity of, of sort of defining character uh, in a pluralistic um, culture rather than a constructed belief approach. In other words, it provides an opportunity to the school to counteract students and their parents who seek to operate with a more self-referential, sort of ad hoc definition of character um, and say, if you don't want to be here uh, with this working definition of character, that's fine. You've got options, uh, which is true largely in the independent school world. Uh, and our work so far is focused almost entirely on developing shared beliefs among faculty, um, trusting that, that they are uh, critical and key and sort of a necessary precondition to being able to do this work effectively with students. Uh, what's not happened yet is an attempt to do any sort of training or development with faculty or students using these, this definition um, or to talk about how one develops bravery in a student and how you'd measure it if you knew how to develop it. Um, moreover, and perhaps more problematically, there's been no examination yet of the sources underlying this definition of character. We're a secular school founded by a transcendentalist deist. Uh, we have in Frederick Gunn, uh, this abolitionist educator outdoorsman, a great model, a relevant model, I think, from which to draw inspiration for what good character looks like in action, but we've done no kind of real work uh, to help us identify the first principles um, underlying why we've chosen these things and not others. Uh, so a lot of work ahead. Not only do we need to seek agreement uh, as adults on these definitions and practice practices on a one-time basis, but for this to truly become part of the school's fabric, uh, we must revisit these definitions and practices sort of throughout the year every year and for those of us in education this last part is sort of the the glory and the heartache of what we do it's like groundhog's day if we do our jobs well it works and then they all leave and we start in september and we think didn't we just work on this and because in fact we did um so i'll end there thank you